I want to go ahead and welcome everybody to June's Lunch Bite session. My name is Amanda Steinball, and I am the facilitator for Lunch Bites. Um, and the purpose of these trainings is to provide targeted training to all faculty and staff of Neosho in order to better serve our students. So thank you for joining me today. I'm super excited um, for the amount of people that are going to be joining us, and I hope that you walk away with something beneficial from this presentation. So just for your references, this uh, session is recorded and will be used for future training. And in order to keep an accurate tally of who is attending today, if you have not already, if you could go ahead and put your first and last name in the chat. Um, and in order to access that, if you would scroll to the bottom of your Zoom window, a black bar will pop up and one of those options will be chat. Go ahead and type your name for me. I'll give everybody just a few seconds to do that. Hello, I'm going to just test my audio. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. In addition to um, using the chat option for attendance, what we do too is it's a back channel chat that can occur throughout the presentation. So as the presentation is progressing, if you have any questions that come to mind, if you want to type them there in the chat. And then if it's necessary to interrupt the presentation at the time, I will go ahead and do that for you. If not, we may wait till the end for the question and answer session. But in addition today, um, Nathan is going to be handling a lot of the questions with us too. So hopefully between Nathan and myself, we can get you an answer as efficiently as possible. So before I turn it over to the presenters, I would like to pre uh, introduce all three of them. The first one, as we all know, is Sarah Robb, the Vice President for Student Learning. Hi, Sarah. Hello. The second presenter is Marie Gardner. She, if you don't know, is the Dean for the Ottawa Online Campuses. Marie, you're muted at the moment. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and then the third presenter is Nathan Stanley. As he said earlier, he is a math instructor for Neosho, but he's also the coordinator of assessments for this upcoming school year. Hello. Thanks, Nathan. All right, well guys, thank you for agreeing to present today and we're all super excited and logged on. There's a lot of us, there's 18 of us logged on. This is amazing. So I'm gonna turn it over to you and um, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Is, uh, is, is this my turn or is this? Okay, yes, this is my turn. So <laughs> sorry about uh, the fact that you can't see me close up. I'm in my conference room. There was trouble with the microphone in my office. So um, I would like to just uh, say thank you all for attending uh, this session today. We are at an exciting point in time for the assessment of student learning activity here that we've transitioned to on Inside NC. Uh, the, I would like to just kind of give a, a basically a current status, a little bit of history if you didn't know. Um, so I'll, I'll give my very brief history. Uh, we've been working on uh, developing this customized product at Insight NC for the last four or five years, in fact. Um, and the last two years have been uh, steady work along with a team of, of people from Gensabar to de develop this system that will be exactly what we wanted uh, and uh, what we were hoping for. Um, Marie and I, and um, before Nathan, other uh, Ethan Smiley, uh, was a member of a group of people just searching for a product out there that would fit our needs. And our assessment of student learning activity here at the college is um, pretty robust, and there weren't a lot of options for us out in the world. So we ultimately decided to build our own custom product. That's where we are today. And today is a super exciting day. As you all know, the assessment. Um, uh, product has been put onto our production server, so the server that you all are working in right now. Some of you have volunteered to be um, uh, part of a pilot group to utilize this new system. Some of you may have chosen not to be in that pilot, and uh, so this summer what we're doing is allowing for people to use the new system if they volunteer to do so, or to use the older system that we still have available. I hope in the fall to just transition completely over to the new assessment reporting system. So today, um, we so it is on the production server. Many of you probably have already seen step four if you 
looked at course um, coursework and you've um, developed a course, you've probably seen step four. A couple of people have already been using it, uh, in fact. Uh, but today is the day that we'll be able to upload, uh, uh, the, all of the outcomes have been uploaded, and so today is the day, I believe, if everything works well, that we can make the assessment portal available to all of those who have signed up for the pilot. Is that accurate, Marie? Would it be okay to confess I wasn't listening? Yeah. Of course, that's uh, totally um, okay. I was typing a message. Um, could you repeat that, Sarah? I, am, I apologize. I just, I just made the announcement and, uh, about potential That, I believe, will happen uh, shortly. A couple, I have a meeting right after this, and then I think I will do that before I go home today. So, yes. Wonderful. The holdup there was um, we had a, a list of outcomes that uh, Nathan Stanley took an enormous amount of time to update and make sure it was accurate. Um, there may still be issues there, but um, he's done an excellent job of getting that prepared. Uh, for everyone. Uh, so we were waiting on that to, to be uploaded by Jen Zavar and, and that happened this morning. So now we're at the final stage where the assessment portal, what we're going to demonstrate to you today, is going to be available for you in your class if you've been, if you um, signed up to be a pilot uh, later today. So I'm really, really thrilled that that timing worked out today and that Jen Zavar was able to do that for us. Um, so I think at this point, I'll entertain any questions, uh, but then I, I don't want to take up too much time because the demonstration is really the, the thing that we want to share with you today. So we'll start on that, but I will entertain any questions that anyone has at this point. Uh, Sarah? Yeah. May I interrupt? Um, I noticed there are several attendees today at this Zoom meeting who did not volunteer for the pilot group. I have a list of, of those names of people who did not volunteer for the pilot group. Just wanted to uh, ask if any of you wanted to join that group and volunteer to use the new system, the new assessment system. I have Beverly, uh, Dawn, Catherine, Laura Mallett, Bev, Kristen Varner-Lee, Alan Murray, and Eric Rowe or Eric Rao, excuse me, uh, who- uh, Eric Rao is in Cal. <laughs> I know, I, that was mine. Uh, yes, but some of them have courses that don't start till the fall. Okay. So Don would be one of those whose courses don't start till the fall. So you be only those individuals in ALHT that have a summer course. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't clarify that. Uh, that would be anyone who's teaching this summer and Nathan, they, they may be wanting to look at it before they sign up, if okay. that makes sense. I, I was going to say, this is Dawn. Um, I don't, like Richard said, I don't have a class this semester, uh, but I will have it in the fall. And I just was wondering if we could look at it when we're doing our, uh, you know, setting up our course. And, you know, can we look at then? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I am sharing, if you can see my desktop, I am sharing the list of courses that we have for the summer. Um, so if you see your name and your course that you would like to pilot with on this list, you should have the assessment page in that class by the end of today. And if it's not there and you want it to be, I think you need to contact Nathan. And um, is I'm sorry, I can't see who all's on the call, but is Dr. Yuza here? Does he happen to be here on the call? No, I don't, I don't. see him on the call today. And what about Angela and Hobson? Nor uh, Jeanette Weiser, I don't okay. believe. Okay. I knew in advance that they would uh, not be able to make it and that we were recording it for their benefit. Right. Okay, well, very good. Okay, so with that, I think, are there any other, are there any questions from the group here today at this point? Okay, uh, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't know if any questions popped up in the chat. Nathan, do you know, or Amanda, did any questions pop up? Not at this moment, Sarah. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Well then, I think uh, let's move on into the demonstration portion of our meeting. So Sarah and I will be kind of tag teaming this, um, but we have an outline that we'll follow. 
Um, and we'll see how far we get today. I would just like to mention, this is just the first training session. Um, so whatever we don't get to today, we will pick up with. And I believe Nathan has already sent an email um, talking about a couple dates uh, for meetings for the cohort that's going to be testing this summer. Um, so the first thing, which you probably have already seen, um, is the step four. Um, so for today, we're using an NC105 section that has our favorite um, fake students in it. Um, so we're just gonna take a look at one of the assignments. I will edit the assignment, and then we will take a look at step four. Um, how many of you have already explored step four? Okay, just a couple. All right, so we'll talk about what is here. First of all, um, one of the requests from faculty was the ability to link an entire assignment to an outcome or the ability to link a part of an assignment to an outcome. And you can do both of those from step four. Um, for example, uh, if I want to take the entire assignment, then uh, this class happens to have three different outcomes. So I'm going to link this to LMS competency, and then I'm going to click add. And at the bottom here under the red, sorry, my um, I'm scrolling a little bit there, but I'm not intending to. Uh, under the red, you can see that this assignment will be linked to the LMS competency outcome. But let's say this assignment also should be linked to Neosho policy. Then we can set the drop down for the entire assignment to outcome one and we can click add. And now I can link this one assignment to multiple outcomes. When I save it, and we'll go back in and look at that. We should see then at the bottom, outcomes one and two under, under step four. So it is now linked and notice even though I added them in the order two one, it went ahead and numerically ordered them for us. Um, we'll look at a different assignment and we will, uh, the online assignment here, we can look at the partial assignment, which is underneath the or, this is in reference to any assignment that has parts, which would be any assignment that is coded as an online uh, assignment created through the test builder that has sections, or any assignment that is set to grade by rubric, and then each criterion would be considered a part. So on this assignment, there happen to be two different sections. I can take the section called Academic Honesty Quiz and link that to outcome one on the OSHA policy. And I can also take the outcome, um, the section that's just assignment and link that to LMS competency. And then I can save that. So using step four, um, you've now seen how it is possible to link a coursework assignment to an outcome. We think this section, uh, the step four, will be particularly helpful as you're creating a new course, uh, maybe writing new assignments or creating new assignments in the LMS. Um, we think there's a better way uh, or a more efficient way if you already have all of your assignments. So for those of us piloting this summer who are starting with uh, existing assignments, we're gonna take a look at the second method for you to um, link coursework to outcomes. But before we do that, um, Sarah, I think you're going to talk for just a minute about the new audience feature. Yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, I would like just to do uh, a standard caveat here that as this is a new product from Genzibar, a new customized product, we are still in process of completing our product. We have it on the production server, we're piloting it, uh, but there are still some items left unresolved at this point. So what I'm going to call those at this time are known bugs. That's what Genzibar calls them and that's what I've uh, graduated to learning their language. So these are known bugs that I want everyone to be aware of at this time. 
but um, very hopeful that they will be resolved uh, by the end of our, our of our pilot. I'm hopeful uh, for that to be. So one of the known bugs currently that's that's so it's not working exactly like what we would expect um, is the audience feature. Um, uh, my notes say not working correctly as of right now. So hold on, let me go to the audience feature. Oh, um, the audience feature issue, pardon me. Do you want me to talk about that, Sarah? Uh, I'm almost there. Okay. Um, but you can if you'd like. Um, so when, yeah. Actually, Marie, while she's um, examining her notes, can we address mm -hmm. a couple of questions that came up? While you Absolutely, were... yes. Um, the first one that we had was from Tina, and she wanted to know, will we have general education outcomes included in the step four? No. Uh, we will not have general education outcomes included in step four. The process that we use uh, at Neosho to uh, assess general education is through course level outcomes, but at the course, from the instructor's point of view, they won't have anything to do with that. So after, let's say for example, college algebra outcomes are utilized for the general education outcome of critical and analytical thinking. Um, the, the instructor of college algebra will still complete their assessment. On the back end later is when we'll pull that data and assess general education outcome number one. So it will have, uh, um, we'll continue with the same processes that we always have with regard to general education assessment. Perfect. So that process is done on the back end, not on the front end with, with uh, inside NC. Yeah, the instructor of the courses don't, don't have any, other than we pull the data that the instructors submit, um, but they, they don't have anything to do with that um, functionally. Okay. Other than submitting the data. Uh, and I wanted to bring up uh, in response to a question from Jen Kane. Will we have time to demo uh, a rubric assignment and how to assign portions of a rubric to uh, different outcomes? We can certainly do that. Um, in fact, let's just do that right now while Sarah is still, um, unless Sarah is ready. Uh, it, it boils down to uh, real quick with regard to that known bug. If you select an audience for an assignment, um, it's set to open for the first three students in a class, for example. Um, the assignment, though, appears currently on every student's assessment outcome number one. So if you have a coursework item that is linked to an outcome, let's say this coursework item is linked to outcome one, if you have the audience feature selected in that coursework item and only anticipate certain students having access to it, in the outcomes table that you'll see a little bit later, um, what the students see, the students will see that uh, coursework item when, when you have uh, clearly identified that they shouldn't. So that's a known bug that we hope to get resolved by the end of our pilot. So I'll turn it over back. If, if that, hopefully that covers it. Marie, is that correct? I think, I think you summed that up nicely, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, Jen, here we're looking at, I quickly imported a rubric. Um, so when we look at step four, and look at the second half here underneath the or, I could take uh, the critical thinking portion of my rubric and link it to technology. So basically this first drop down uh, becomes each of the criterion and the second drop down remains your outcomes. So it works just like the test builder where the first drop down was every section that you had. Okay. We'll go ahead and save that. Okay, so I think now we're ready to take a look at um, the new page, which you might have noticed in my navigation pane, there's a new page called assessment. Um, when you go to the assessment page, you have an assessment navigation with four options. So again, for those of us that have um, all of our assignments already created, uh, there is a way to view all of those assignments and do your linking from coursework assignments to outcomes. And that is cleverly named link outcomes to or link coursework to outcomes. 
So when we come in here again, we have the drop down that would show all of your outcomes. Um, so let's just set this to Neosho policy. Um, this particular class has one unit. Um, the unit is called Inside NC Orientation for Students. Um, so we're seeing every assignment in this class that's under that unit. For those of you that might have eight units, then you would have eight folders here and each one would have a show hide so you could collapse or expand them. Um, in this class, again, there is only one unit. Um, this is also a good time to mention, if you view your coursework page by type, then you'll see the types on this page when you come to this page. If you view your coursework by unit, then you'll see this by unit as well. So this page mirrors your structure in coursework. Um, but we can see here every single assignment. Um, you might be thinking, well, that's a longer list than what it looked like in coursework, and you would be correct. Uh, because here, I'll just highlight these. These are the two test builder sections on the online assignment. And then the next ones that are indented here with the double caret, uh, these are the rubric criterion. So you have what we would call the parent assignment if you want to take the whole assignment, or you have the specific criterion or the specific sections if you just want to take a part. Um, so here in one fell swoop, we can go through, pick out any assignments that cover Neosho policy. Uh, we've already got two of those. Um, so we would save that. I haven't changed anything here. So I'll just go to LMS competency and expand. And here we might need to know under competencies um, how to set up the onlines, the posting in a forum. Um, again, you could pick any of these and then save your changes. And then the third here for the third outcome, um, the technology ones here are taking a screenshot and setting up your mailbox portlet. And I'll save those. So very quickly I could see all of my assignments and select the assignments for each outcome or the partial assignments for each outcome. Um, the other thing that we wanna talk about here, you might notice this additional drop down that's referred to as weight type. By default, every assignment or partial assignment that you code to an outcome will be weighted equally. So if you put four assignments to an outcome, each one would count 25%. Um, you don't have to mess with the math, the system's gonna do all the math for you. Uh, but some of you might want to link assignments to the outcome, but then set up some sort of weighting system. So let's take a look at technology. And uh, again, here I have two assignments that are linked to this outcome. I'm going to change from none to custom. Again, you only have to do this if you want to establish that one or more of your assignments carries a different weight. Um, the only rule here is that the numbers that you enter have to add up to 100 so that you are allocating all 100%. So I'm going to take the screenshot at 75% and the mailbox portlet at 25%. Uh, and then um, let's just say I didn't want to do the math and I just allocated 85% uh, and I tried to save that. Um, you're going to get an error message that says you can't save that, uh, mainly because you didn't sum to 100%. So we have tried to build that in. I need to go back to outcome three and then try my custom weighting again at 75 and 25. And then save. Then when we set this back to outcome three, it shows that it's a custom weight and we can review our weights or change our weights. Um, so that is using this page called link coursework to outcomes. Um, Sarah, I think I skipped over, you were gonna talk about the not graded and not included. Yeah, no, that's fine. I also wanted to take a moment now to mention that, um, that this weighted concept associated with your outcomes is something that 
may be brand new to some of you. Um, depending upon how you in the past have developed your averages for your outcome scores, you may have had a system like this. Um, and this was a specific request from faculty to, involve, uh, to get involved in our custom product. So we're happy to have the ability to do this. I just want to make sure and clarify that um, you know, these, this weight is going to only be associated with your outcome scores. There will be no impact to the student's grade in the class. So I know that some of you also in your grade book set up a weighting system. So I just wanted to clarify quickly that that is a completely separate, um, a completely separate thing. So if you think that one of the items that you're linking to an outcome should carry more weight as the assessment score, this is where you would do that. And again, it makes no impact anywhere other than that assessment score. Okay. Um, also, uh, before we move forward, uh, Marie just uh, helped me to remember that I needed to share another known bug. Um, there are, um, when, you, when you develop a coursework assignment in, um, you know, from the beginning, there is an option now that you can not include this uh, coursework score in the final grade. I can't remember the exact wording, I'm sorry. Thank you, Marie. That's it, not included in final grade. Not included in final grade. Um, if you select that on a, a coursework assignment, um, for right now, the current known bug is that that does not show on the link coursework to outcomes page. You can still, I believe, if I'm accurate, I believe you still can link it in step four, but it does not show on the link coursework to outcomes page. So uh, that's just, again, another known bug that might cause you some concern if you're in that scenario. I'm not sure how many of you use uh, the option to not include this assignment in the final grade. Um, uh, I don't know how many people utilize that now, right now, but that's just a small discrepancy that I wanted to note at this time. Uh, and this is a great time also to point out, if your grading method is set on not graded, then step four will disappear. And also that assignment will not show on the link coursework to outcomes page. So that is working it as we intended. Um, so if you select this to not graded, notice that step four is now gone. Don't panic about that. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, Marie? Yes. I'd like to interrupt with a question that Jen Kane brought forth. Um, if our weights for assessment are independent of those assigned in the gradebook, is there anything that needs to be indicated on the syllabus for the student's benefit so that they are aware of this? Or is this because it does not affect their final grade that they receive, are they to, are, are they to be informed of that or not? Can I answer that? Sure. Um, the, uh, the way that I would respond to that is that the students are gonna be aware of the target score because that is currently on the syllabus. Right now we have a section on the master syllabus that just has a generic statement about assessment of student learning. If you want to provide the information of your assessment weight to your students, I think the more information the students have, the better. We are at a time, and we're not yet there in our demonstration today, but we are at a time in which students will have the opportunity to personally review in the class how they're doing on those outcomes. So the more information they have on that, I would assume the better. But it's going to be a challenge to make sure, just like I just did with you all, to make sure that the students are fully comprehending the difference between a grade in the class and their assessment score. So that's the ownership on that is going to be the instructor. The instructor will have to be able to express that clearly to a student to avoid um, confusion. Does that make sense? Jen? I, I can't see. She's giving you a thumbs up. Okay. There was also a question um, earlier on by Dawn and um, reiterated by myself. <clears throat> Are the outcomes going to automatically be uploaded for all instructors that, according to the master syllabus for their courses or where did those come from originally? Well, they're pulled from a, a table, a database, and they uh, should be automatically uploaded. Uh, and updated every term. 
Yeah, and, um, that has, that's what happened today. That's why we're eligible to make your outcome uh, assessment page available to you today. So um, it was a, a big project that Nathan completed uh, and uh, with Marie's help and with Jen Savar's help, we finally got that done. So that is good. Um, so it might be um, neither of the two who have um, duplicate outcomes are on the call. Mm -hmm. um, but it might be good to cover for everyone else. If you have an outcome that you don't believe is correct, what should you do? What you should do if you see an outcome that you don't believe is correct, uh, what you'll need to do is email Nathan Stanley uh, because he will be the one managing that. Um, in the past, I, I don't need to give too much detail, but in the past we had to use an, uh, a database system that IT was involved with, and so it was very, very much a, like a four-step process to get those updated. Uh, but now Nathan will have the ability, we're not going to show it today, but we do have an administration portion of our custom, so Nathan will have access to go in and update that outcome as needed. However, we're still going to follow the, the same rules we always follow with regard to up, outcome changes. No outcome changes can be made unless it's been approved through curriculum. So that, you know, that whole process has to happen. If it's just an error and the, the wrong one is there, definitely allow Nathan to evaluate that and update as, uh, as he sees fit. But anything, um, any massive change, anything that's on the master syllabus uh, cannot be changed until it goes through curriculum. So uh, why I was asking is because uh, when I did the assessment this year, they still had the old assignments, so, uh, the syllabus uh, for outcomes. So that was my question. Why my question is because I was wondering if they had been corrected now this next year. If you send Nathan the information for your course, he can check that for you. Okay. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to the next part of the demonstration. I'm super excited about this. Um, imagine the old way where you had to manually go through and look up scores for students and then manually calculate the means, because I know not all of you are recovering math teachers like Nathan and I, and you just don't groove on that quantitative stuff. Uh, at the click of a button, we're gonna see means. So we're gonna go to the view outcome means for this section um, and I've clicked that, and um, we're going to click the Update Outcome Cache button. And we're going to hold our breath. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Have any um, uh, grades been entered in the coursework? Oh, you know what? Actual um, scores? Yeah, it does say ungraded assignments there. Let's just give these students some grades, shall we? Don't give them all 100 on everything. On everything, right. Um, that's a, I'm sorry about that. At, uh, we're pausing here so we can give our fake students some fake grades so that you can see some fake means here. <laughs> Those of you that don't use rubrics, that's how easy it is to grade a rubric. And this happens to be a long rubric. Some people have rubrics that are much shorter. While she's doing that, you know, some, uh, some instructors had some concern with regard to those assignments that are basic, uh, in which that they give in a face-to-face -face class and they don't have sections built in an online test, for example. Uh, the rubric would be a wonderful option uh, for generating a mechanism at which you can assess each individual criterion. So if in a face-to-face -face class you're giving an exam that covers several, uh, potentially several outcomes, uh, you could set up a criterion per outcome and uh, essentially utilize the rubric system for grading purposes. Um, I'm sure Nathan would happily sit down with anybody who's in that particular situation and work through uh, helping develop that because um, I know that was a concern from some of uh, some of the instructors originally okay so we do have some grades in here now on all of the assignments that were not um, upload or online so now if we come back to the view outcome means for this section 
uh, we can see that the students in this section for outcome one have scored a 100. Um, we also, because this was important to several faculty, we're showing the mean with all scores and the mean if you exclude zeros. Um, so there were no zeros on this assignment. There is one assignment that is coded or linked to this outcome one that is not yet graded. Uh, and then for outcome two, the students earned 86.5. Um, again, there were no zeros earned on that assignment, but there are still four assignments yet to be graded or yet to come to in the semester. And then for outcome three, nothing has yet been graded there. So if you upload or if you link your assignments um, and if you want to utilize this system uh, in a formative way, you can take a look at this at any point in the semester and see what the status is currently for outcome one, what is the current status for outcome two, et cetera. This is a, a new tool that you'll have access to uh, anytime in the class. As soon as your class, um, you don't have to wait like we do now. We wait until after the cert date, uh, and then we allow you to access your assessment reports in that external course. I'm going ahead and grading one additional assignment. Sorry for the delay. Um, and then we'll go back and take a look at that page again. Uh, Marie? Yes. Alan had a question about uh, the update cache button. Mm -hmm. Every time you go to the means result page, you should update the cache button or click you, that button? You do not have to do that automatically. In fact, I have not clicked it. Uh, and it does show today at 1235, which is when, um, because outcome three had not yet been calculated, but outcome one and two had, it has a new date and timestamp. Uh, but it is a good practice, and we wanted to put this in the hands of faculty. Um, it can be a good practice if you change a grade or change linkage of assignments to outcomes to go ahead and click the update outcome cache button. That, that way you do know for sure that things have automatically updated. Um, so now we see 1237 and uh, 53 seconds, 52 and 53 seconds. Typically, um, at this point, when you go to this page and click the view outcome means for this section, um, typically it's calculating those as you're coming in to look at it. So you should always be looking at the most current data, um, but particularly at the end of the semester when you might be working on your report, um, if it helps you feel comfortable, click that button. Um, Sarah, do you wanna say anything more about that? No, no, okay. I think that covers it. Um, so that last assignment that I graded, notice that I gave two, I believe I gave two students zeros. So the mean including those scores on outcome three is a 36, but when we exclude it, we get the 60%. Uh, and still there is one assignment that is not yet graded that would be um, included in that outcome. Uh, Marie? Uh huh. I think we have a request to see the assessment landing page, the actual assessment page itself. That is this page right here. Perfect, thank you. So okay. the view outcome means for this section is what we were just looking at. That's where you can see at a glance how your students are doing uh, with zeros and without zeros and how many assignments excuse me, are currently linked, but not yet graded for that particular outcome. Um, also, if you hover over the blue dot, um, some of you may not know your outcomes by outcome one, two, and three, but if you hover over the blue dot, then you would see what outcome that is in your class. That would be the actual text of the outcome that shows up. Right here, we've just, we've created these, um, and so they're just a couple of words, but in reality, most of your outcomes are, are whole sentence, and that's what would show when you hovered over that eye, or the little green, or blue eye circle. Um, are there questions before we move on to the next part of this page? Uh, Tina has a general question about what do students see in relation to assessment, and when do they see it? We will look at that in just a minute. Um, 
In fact, we could look at that now. The next page I was gonna show was the view outcome means for students, but let's look at the student view first. Um, so I'm gonna change identities. We're now logged in as I'm a mouse into the same class. And when Ima goes to the assessment page, which she can see any time faculty give her permission to see it. So if you don't wish your students to see that, you need to remove the permissions for them. Um, but here she can see this class has three outcomes and she can see her score, 198.75 and 30. Now she can also drill down into these so for outcome one, she can see the description of that outcome. She can also see the two coursework assignments that are linked and how she did on those. Um, let's highlight the hyphen hyphen. That's on the online assignment because it is not yet graded. So her score on this particular outcome is fully the 100 that she earned on the Panther email assignment. If we expand the LMS competency, you'll see four assignments not yet graded, so they all show up with the hyphen hyphen there. Um, and she earned a 97.5 and a 100, which are currently averaging for 98.75. And then on outcome three, um, she has a 40% on an assignment that took a 75% weight of the class. Um, so there's some fancy weighting going on there, but remember outcome three was the one that was weighted, not a default, everything's equal. So this is what the student sees. At any point where you have assignments that are linked to outcomes, they would see if they came to this page and expanded the outcome, they would see the list of assignments and they would see either the dash dash or their grade on that assignment. Tina just asked the question, I just popped it up. Is there any way to show the weighting for the students? We don't have that capability here in this page at this time. So that's where the instructor uh, sharing the information would be extremely important. And um, part of what we want with the pilot would be to compile those lists of questions just like that one um, that we might think about in a version two release. Um, so this is student view. Um, if we come back to the instructor view, we're gonna take a look at that other page, view outcome means for students. And here we will see the five students in the class. You also have the same withdrawn or inactive student table that you typically are used to seeing on coursework and gradebook. Um, but here we see outcome one, two, and three. And then um, if we take a look, we were IMA, I believe. So if we look at IMA, you'll basically see exactly what IMA saw. So this view is exactly what your students will see. And you can get to that information for any one of your students at any point in time in the semester. You also will see the class average, which matches the 100, the 86.5, and the 36, match the numbers that we saw when we were on the view outcome means for this section page. There's a known bug here that I'd like to point out. Um, normally in your gradebook system, when you have the student list like this, um, you have the opportunity to right click or, or whatever click on the name and open them in a new tab. In the past, you may have also um, seen some previous or next, and that capability is not currently available. However, that's one of the items that we're hoping to get resolved by the end of the, of the, of the pilot. Uh, so right now, when you go from I'm a mouse to cheesy mouse, you have to go back to the whole list uh, before you can click forward to Mighty Mouse, the next one, or, or whichever one you wanted to see. So that's um, a known bug that we are trying to resolve. It's just kind of a pain to have to go back and forth if you're looking from student to student to student. We're hoping that we can get the, at least the previous or next button available to us at this time. A few of you have been around long enough um, to remember coursework when you would go down into a student 
to grade their assignment, you then only had the choice to go back to all of the students in the list on coursework. Um, I think Kevin's been here long enough. Nathan, have you been here long enough for that? Yeah. It's been a long time, uh, but some of us remember um, and, the, and we love the next and previous links that we have now. Um, so we are working towards that. In this class, um, it did not take very long. Um, so if we go look at Mighty Mouse uh, and then we go back to all students, it's a fairly quick page load. Uh, but it might be a good time to notice or to mention um, if you have more outcomes or more students in your course, um, you will expect a little bit longer wait time because again, the system is doing all of those calculations um, at that point in time. It's certainly much faster than any of us would want to calculate it or have time to calculate it by hand. Um, but you do have to realize that that is what's going on. So what is the, the winner, uh, the class that wins the number of outcomes contest? Anatomy and physiology with 18. Uh, yeah, 18 outcomes in AMP. Um, so they're gonna have a little bit longer page load here. And um, nursing instructors with 48 in their class also will see a little bit longer page load times. Um, Sarah, are you also talking about dropping an assignment in the grade book? Yeah, would you select one of the students? Um, if you recall earlier, Marie showed you an example of a, of a student and in the, in the example she highlighted, uh, yeah, so if you drop the grade, so she's showing you right now, if you go into the grade book and drop a grade, what happens is on the view by student, the grade actually shows as a zero. So instead of what, sh what should be appearing there is that dash dash, but in fact, the grade shows as a 0, 0.00. Um, that is a known bug. And in fact, we have um, confirmed that the system is still calculating accurately. It is not calculating that as a zero. It is calculating it as a null. Um, so we know that that's working correctly. It's just not presenting correctly on the screen. So that's hopefully, again, one of those things that will be um, resolved by the end of the pilot. Hopefully they'll just change that back to the uh, dash dash that you're seeing on the other ones that are not yet graded. Um, so there was a perfect example. Um, those of you that were watching quickly saw that the mean was 98, whatever it was before. I quickly went and updated the outcome cache and then it changed the, the average there to be solely reflective of the Panther email assignment because this one was dropped from the student's grade. Marie, we do have a question about um, selecting permissions. What is the default permission um, for student views to the assessment page? Um, Tina asked if, it, as faculty members, if we need to set those permissions or how are they automatically set? At this point in time, the default is to show students. Um, I, I'm assuming that those who are piloting this summer will want their students to see it. Um, if this group tells me otherwise, I can change that before I add that page to your class. Uh, I will let Nathan tell me which way to do that. <coughs> Uh, based on input he gets from you all. So if you have um, opinions, I guess we could ask for that now or you can uh, email Nathan. Nathan, were you assuming it would come in viewable to students? That was my assumption, yes. Uh, does anyone on the call not want that to happen? I was wondering if we could have the weekend to have the assignments loaded and co coded. Um, if we decide to move forward with pulling this in uh, viewable to students, you as the instructor can take those permissions off for a specific uh, class. Um, so you would just come, I went to the access link in the admin bar and I've clicked on students and this says hide this page from students. And when you do that, they now have the stop sign. So you should be able to tell if your students can see this page or not. So uh, and you're uploading it at some point today? Uh, that's the plan. 
uh, and um, Nathan and I were both assuming it would come in viewable to students. <laughs> um, so uh, again, I'm not going to do that for a couple hours after we get done here, and I will check with Nathan before I do that to see which way to pull this in as. Uh, and Nathan, do you just want to make a determination now, or do you want some time to get feedback? Well, I'm getting feedback from uh, one or two folks who don't want students to view it, um, but I can let you know if it, folks' personal preference after the meeting. And then um, after that, will you send an email to everyone so everyone will know which way it is pulled in as? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I have a question about course copy for fall. Is it possible that they wouldn't have the assessments page in their course um, if they do a course copy from a prior year? Uh, it is not in any of the fall courses at this point. Um, so we will have to talk about that um, as we get closer um, to the fall semester. And there will likely come some emails from the online campus uh, with direction on how you should do a course copy. Um, it is possible to do a course copy and not take the entire course. Um, if you do, if we put the page in your course and then you do a complete course copy, you have um, overridden the page in your course. Um, so we'll have to deal with that. Uh, but Sherry and I will work on that in July and August and we'll send some emails with instructions on the course copy process, uh, but we'll likely have to work one-on-one -on -one with some people to ensure that they do have the page. I, I have a question on that right there since I'm not going to do it until August, but this summer I plan on reviewing my course in my own sandbox. And are you saying that we can still work in our sandbox, but you may have new uh, instructions come fall to transfer our sandbox to the course? Yes, and we could put the assessment page in your sandbox course if that will help you for the summer. Um, you would just want to request that from Nathan or from me. Okay, I probably will. That way I can set it up and work on it and not wait till the last minute. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh-huh. Are you about to move to the report portion? I think so. Yep. Just to the presenters, I just want to keep us on time here. We do have about seven minutes remaining of the scheduled hour um, that we do, so just Heads up on that. Okay. Um, we can show this very quickly just as an overview uh, and not really talk too much in detail about it. Um, basically, when you come to the outcome assessment report link, there will be a drop down which will show the section report, and there will be a separate part of this report for each of your outcomes. So we'll look first at the section report. Um, where it basically mirrors this the, it's the same assessment report that you've always done for the class for your classes we've just put it into inside and in see in such a way that you don't have to complete the map and several things are going to be uploaded for you um, uh, in this case this is the portion of the report that deals with questions about the section overall so you can see some of the questions there and Marie's typing into a, a, a text box what if any recommendations do you have for the scheduling, et cetera, et cetera. So these are overall section questions that you've always had um, the opportunity to report on. Um, it's, it starts up at the top with the pre and post test percent. That does say if applicable. Now, um, quite honestly, not very many people submit information on the pre and post test assessment, uh, which is completely fine. Again, an instructor has the right to choose how they want to assess um, each outcome. So if there is data for a pre and post test, you have a spot there on this screen to submit that. And then you also have all of the text boxes uh, that you can answer those questions. What specific changes were made in previous semesters that would have impacted this, uh, this uh, session, section this semester. Um, this is the big one, what additional resources are needed. We do pull that data uh, and look at those requests. Um, uh, 
every year for the budget. So we use we use the answers there. So you can um, you can type whatever you want to put in there. Um, you also now that we have what are called what you see is what you get boxes or WYSIWYG, um, you can also use things like bold, underline, emoticons. Um, you can upload a file if you want to or a picture. Um, so th these are your options here. This is something that we have um, we have become really really proud of because for years and years we've used the, the current system that we have in which you can't change the font. You can't even make it larger so you can read it if you have trouble looking at the screen. And uh, now we have uh, completely moved to the next level and have all of these available options here. So again, this is just the section report. So it looks like um, now the status of that, because Marie typed some things in, is that the section report is now in progress. So you can come in here at any point in the semester and type in information in these, in these boxes. Um, then once you are ready to go to the first outcome and start reporting on that, this is again the same questions that you've always answered. Here's the outcome description, the target mean is presented for you, and here you have the actual mean that's been calculated by the system uh, pr presented to you and the actual mean excluding zeros, which has been created by you and completed by the system. What it also does for you is um, pulls in automatically the names of the coursework assignments that you have linked. So that shows up there. You don't have to type that in. The only thing that you have to type in for each outcome is the narrative that explains how that outcome is going for you. What, what do you want to change? What kind of activities are you going to do next semester as a result of the assessment scores? What kind of information do you uh, plan to input in the next time you teach the course? Or actually, um, because this is now going to allow for a more formative use of assessment processes, you can type in here and save it and you can say, well, at this point, it looks like I really need to focus more on blank for outcome one and then come back and again say the next time I did that and there was an improvement. You know, you could utilize this as documentation however you want. Um, but this is ultimately per outcome, the only thing you have to type in and create. Everything else is created for you by the system. So I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that this helps um, all of our faculty members improve the quality of the narrative. I know it just says the word narrative there and we, we, we realized that too late in the game uh, to update what the statement says there, but I think um, that we can do enough uh, training to make sure that we all know what we expect in that, in that box. There have been some confusion points in the past with regard to, well, I met my target, so I'm not really gonna say anything here. I would encourage you all to take a moment to review what's happening at that outcome and make some quality analysis of, of what's going on there, regardless of whether or not you meet the target or not. But of course, if you do meet the target and you'd like to emphasize that, you can emphasize that in the narrative as well. So that's uh, what it looks like for the outcome. Now, now that she's typed in some information, that also shows in the status um, little table there that it's in progress as well. At the bottom of the page, there is a save option, um, and it, it automatically just continues you to the next outcome, but you can save it um, and then come back to it at any point uh, in the semester. At the point at which you might want to finalize it is when you are going to be done with that. And the, you can see the finalize this outcome button is up there on the right hand side. So at the point at which you are essentially finished with that outcome report, you push the finalize this outcome and it'll turn in the status uh, table to finalized and the date there. It gives you lots of are you sure messages um, and it then says this outcome has been finalized. Um, at that point you can't go back in and update it. Uh, so you need to be pretty sure that you're ready to finalize it. However, um, our system is now built in which if you've made an error and you push the finalize this outcome button and you realize later that, oh, I really shouldn't have, what you can do is contact Nathan, and he can go in on the back end system and um, unfinalize it, essentially. So it, uh, we wanna make sure and, and train everyone to make sure they're ready to finalize when they finalize, uh, but there is an option to, to undo there. It just takes a moment of time 
uh, to communicate with the coordinator of assessment. So um, we'll have more trainings. Nathan's going to have some uh, group meetings and we'll focus on the report a little bit more as we get closer to the end um, of the summer session. Um, hopefully, uh, after this session, you're feeling comfortable with getting some linkage between your coursework assignments and your outcomes. Um, that was our primary goal for this particular session. Um, and then seeing the data that's calculated. Um, I know we're running short on time. Um, are there other questions? Um, I have one more uh, item, Sarah, to talk about uh, with the course copy. Um, are you talking about that? No, go ahead. Um, we have asked to have built into the system that any linkage between assignments and outcomes that you create will forward in a course copy. Um, that is one item that we were not able to test on our test server. We had to wait until we could load everything on the production server. And since we just got our final outcomes loaded this morning, we have not yet had a chance to test that course copy. Um, so that is something that we'll be testing uh, throughout the summer. Uh, so we'll have more information about that. But by the end of the summer, um, we're hopeful that anything that you have linked this summer in this course would forward in a course copy to your fall class if you're teaching the same class or the next time you go to copy it. Um, so just as a disclaimer, um, it's not really a known bug. It's kind of an unknown at this point if it's currently working properly or not. Um, so I don't know if there have been other questions or Amanda, if you're ready to close us. There has not been other questions, but I do want to let you presenters know that there has been um, a wide range of positive feedback in the chat section. So it seems like everybody's pretty happy with the system and they appreciate your work on it. I'm extremely happy about the system and I'm so happy that we're finally here at the point at which we can um, get faculty members using the system. So thank you all if you're interested in doing the pilot. Thank you very much for, for doing that. Yes, thank you. I, I have a question. When, when uh, now that you have it, do you have uh, paperwork, so like on the NEO show uh, guidebook for the platform, will that be incorporated into the platform? Or are you going to be sending out specifics on basically what we have said today? And spots. At this point, we don't have any how-to documentation um, created. Uh, we do have some videos. Um, Sarah, I suppose we could share those videos. Um, however, there's no uh, narrative on them. So I'm not sure how, how helpful they would be. We are videoing, or I'm sorry, we're recording this webinar. Um, Amanda, is that correct? Yes. So we can provide that and we can also begin work on um, updating our how to guide assessment. Uh, there's a current assessment guide, so that will have to be updated and I hope that that can happen prior to um, the fall semester. Perfect. Well, last chance, does anybody have any um, questions that they would like to ask the presenters before we close today's session? Okay. Well, I want to thank you everybody for attending um, this month's Lunch Bite session. I do want to invite you next month on July 19th at noon, um, the same website. We're going to be learning about uh, basic pedagogy, uh, Bloom's taxonomy, and how that applies to higher education. And hopefully um, it will be as instructional or um, effective as today's was. So I want to thank the presenters. It was an amazing presentation, and I think we are all walking away with loads of information that we're going to process and use effectively. Thanks, Amanda. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Same to you. Bye.